Made possible through support from ARC Thrift Stores, Colorado Access, Colorado Developmental Disabilities Council, Developmental Pathways, and the ARC of Aurora. Think Change Talks. Foster care is a temporary arrangement that gives youth a safe place to live when their parents or family of origin are unable to safely care for them. The ultimate goal is to safely reunite a child with their family. Developmental Disabilities and Foster Care, a series of different perspectives. My name is Lacey Settle and I am the Child Welfare Trainer for Arapahoe County. Um, I've been with Arapahoe County for about 10 years now in various roles um, and foster care is really a passion of mine and specifically kids with develop developmental disabilities I think it's just that there can be some challenges to placing those kids um, and so I, know, I think some of those challenges don't need to exist so I think it's all about educating the community about disabilities and what those kids need because I think a lot of people are equipped to do that they just don't think of themselves that they could. So I think from the caseworker perspective one of the things that we always teach our caseworkers is that we really want our kids to remain at home whenever possible um, and if they can't stay home we want them to be placed with family. So we really train our workers that foster care is kind of our last resort um, but that doesn't make it any less important. It's just the last stop for us in terms of placement. Um, and I think casework and foster care can't really happen without each other. I wish that weren't the case, but we, we need both of those systems to um, coexist and work together um, because unfortunately we do have kids that need placement and it's usually pretty immediate and especially the need for kiddos t ages 10 and up. We just don't have a lot of foster parents who are willing to take in that adolescent age. And then when you add on any sort of developmental delay or disability or behavior or mental health diagnosis, um, I think that that can be really intimidating and scary for our families. Um, caseworkers are also faced with Family First, um, which is a legislation that was just passed recently in October that basically eliminated group home and treatment level centers of um, treatment level care centers for kids. Um, so we used to have some abilities to send kiddos, especially adolescent age, to like a group home or a treatment center, and we don't have that anymore. So the foster families that we do have are really being asked to stretch and expand their capacity more so than they ever have. Um, and that doesn't feel good for anyone. It doesn't feel good for us to call and ask, um, and it doesn't feel good for the family to have to tell us no. Um, and so again, I just wish that were opposite, that we had just like a huge selection of where a 16 year old girl with suicidal ideation or mental health could go. We need a lot more resources and a lot more access to those resources. Um, I think that foster parents need more access to things like free childcare, um, free food, all of the things that we would give our biological families that are working towards getting their kids back, I think foster parents should have those as well. Um, it always really irks me when people say that um, people are in foster care for the money because it, there, it's just not true. There is no money involved in foster care, when, especially because we don't pay for child care. So there is a small reimbursement rate, but most of that is used for child care um, or other expenses for kids. So I wish that were different. I think a lot more people would come to the table if those things were paid for or already taken care of. If you could take a placement and know that daycare was already lined up or that school had already been figured out um, because people have to work. <laughs> um, so most of our foster parents have jobs. So having those things sort of taken care of or the resources to have those done for them, I think would bring a lot more people to the table. I just try to reassure parents the same thing as kids, that this is temporary and that we want you to have your kids back, but there are some things that need to be worked out so that those kiddos can be safe with you. Parents are involved in a treatment plan generally that's court ordered. Um, when there's a dependency neglect case. So caseworkers are also writing the court reports for that, appearing in court for that. Um, they are getting treatment set up for parents. They are getting school set up for kids. They are getting things set up for foster parents that the foster parents need, Medicaid numbers, all of those things so that foster parents can get kids to the doctor and the dentist and all of the, the things that foster parents have to do within 72 hours of placement. 
Um, and caseworkers have very tight deadlines too, especially on the intake side of things. They have to do things very quickly. Our philosophy is always reunification. 90% of our kids will return home to a family member. So that's a huge percentage um, that result in kids going home. So again, that's not always to the people that they were removed from, and sometimes that's a relative in another state, um, but we try really hard at the county to find family or anyone that that child knows. So they might have a neighbor that they were really close with or a coach, or um, we've had pastors become involved, teachers. Um, who become kin providers for kids. And that is by far better than going to a complete stranger. We have so many different kinds of foster parents. We have single foster parents. We have same sex foster parents. We have young foster parents. We have foster parents who could be people's grandparents. Um, I mean, it just runs the gamut of, of people who come to the table who are just trying to meet a need in their community and they also want kids to go home. I wish more people in the community knew that, that our foster parents ultimately want that for kids too. To learn more about convenient and contemporary educational products through ThinkChange, visit www.thinkchange.training.